So, hello, and welcome to lesson 8 of our study of integral equations. So, in this lesson, we will talk about approximate method of solution. <coughs> and that's the successive approximation using the free term. So, when it comes to the approximate method of solution, we can use either the free term or the kernel. Because whenever we have an integral equation, the free term and the kernel are all known. They are all known and they are continuous functions. So that means we can always approximate our solution with either the free term or the kernel. So in lesson 8, we will talk about when we use the free term to do the approximation. And in lesson 9, we will talk about using the kernel. Okay. So this is lesson 8, using the free term. So let's just consider the Fred Holmes integral equation of the second kind. And that is given by equation 1. So what we do is that we assume y of x to be the solution. And that y of x is in this form. Phi naught of x plus lambda phi 1 of x up to lambda n phi n of x. So we call that equation 2. So by changing variables, then from that means from x to t, we are going to have y of t will be equal to phi naught of t. That means in equation 2, wherever you find x, we put t there. So we name this equation 3. So after getting equation 3, we substitute equation 3 into equation 1. You know equation 1, we have a certain y of t here. So we substitute this y of t in that equation 1. And do that to give us y of x equals f of x plus lambda integral from a to b, q of x t, then the whole of this becomes our y of t. So doing expansion, expanding, we are going to get y of x will be equal to f of x plus lambda integral from a to b, k of x t, phi naught of t dt. So lambda times lambda, we get plus lambda squared integral from a to b, k of x t, phi naught of t dt to the last term we can see here. And we call this equation 4. So after that, we compare equation 4 to equation 2. So this is equation 2, right? And this is equation 4. So making a comparison, it means that phi naught of x is equal to f of x. Phi 1 of t is equal to integral from a to b k of x t phi naught of t dt so you will get this then using the same comparison phi 2 of x will be equal to integral from a to b k of x t phi 1 of t dt up to phi n of x which will give us this <coughs> so we are saying that our solution is approximated by this series, right? So that means if we know our phi naught of x, phi 1 of x, phi 2 of x, and co, we can find a series solution, an approximate solution to our integral equation using a free term. So in summary, given a Fred Holmes integral equation, we can use a free term as an approximation if the series solution is assumed by using this series. So phi naught of x is f of x. We have derived all these. And phi n of x is given by this. Where the solution of the series is that. Right? So we wrote it in the expanded form. This is the compact form. <coughs> so we will take two examples to make sure we really understand them well. So, 
the question says evaluate using the first three successive approximations of the following integral equations below so this is the first one and this is the second one so let's take the first one so we have y of x equals x plus lambda integral from negative 1 to 1 x t y of t so comparing this particular integral equation to the general form we all know it means our free term is f of x our kernel is x t and the investigative parameter is lambda So we assume that the series solution is given by y of x equals phi naught of x plus lambda phi 1 of x plus lambda squared phi 2 of x plus lambda cube phi 3 of x, right? So these, this, and this are going to be our, the three um, iterations that we are going to do. <coughs> Our final of x is always known because that is equal to the free term. So we know that our final of x is equal to the free term. That's f of x. And our phi n of x is given by this. We've done all this derivation, so you have to know where they are coming from. So from this particular question, our final of x which is equal to the free term is equal to x. So our phi 1 of x, phi 1 of x, we call to integral from negative 1 to 1. Our kernel is s of t, s t, sorry. And we have phi naught of t dt. <coughs> but phi naught of x is what x. So that means phi naught of t will be what t. That's why we have this t here, dt. So since we are integrating with respect to t, that means x is a constant. So we can bring x out. Then you do this um, integration, right? So when you do this integration, you are going to get 2 on 3. You multiply it through by x, and it gives you 2 over 3 x. So our phi 2 of x will be given by integral from negative 1 to 1. We have our kernel dot phi 1 of t dt. <coughs> but phi 1 of x is equal to 2 over 3 x. That means phi 1 of t will be equal to 2 over 3 t. So that is the substitution we make here. Then since we are integrating with respect to t, that means any other thing aside t means a constant so we bring that one out and when we integrate this we know we'll get 2 over 3 you multiply through and that gives you 4 over 9 x so we the same process and we know phi 3 of x will be equal to integral negative 1 1 the kernel dot phi 2 of t dt and that is given by 4 over 9 t dt. So here, we are integrating with respect to t. So 4 over 9 x is a constant. We bring that one out. We do this integration. It gives us 2 over 3. We multiply it through. We get 8 over 27 x. So our general solution will be given by y of x equals x plus 2 over 3 x lambda plus 4 over 9 x lambda squared plus 8 over 27 x lambda cube. I don't know if you know where we are getting this from. You know, we said this is the solution. So we, now we know what phi naught of x is, phi 1 of x, phi 2 of x, and phi 3 of x. So we just made substitution into that. And that gives us this. Then we can decide to write it in a different way, and that is the same as this, right? So this is the same as this. So this happens to be the series solution to 
uh, Fred Holmes integral equation, right? So using doing three iterations. So let's solve the second question. <coughs> so in the second question, we have y of x plus integral from 0 to 1, x t, y of t, dt equals s squared. So writing this integral equation to correspond to the Fred Holmes integral equation, we will have y of x will be equal to s squared minus integral from 0 to 1, x t, y of t, dt. In comparing this to the general form of an integral equation, the Fred Holmes integral equation of the second order, we would have f of x, that's the free term, or the forcing term to be s squared, we'll have our kernel to be x d, and in this case, our investigative parameter lambda is negative 1. So, you should know that the assumed series solution is given by this. So, where our phi not of x is equal to f of x. By now, you should know how some of these uh, come about. And our phi n of x is equal to integral from a to b, kst phi n minus 1 of t dt. So, our phi not of x is equal to the free term, and in this question, our free term is s squared. Then our phi 1 of x is equal to integral from 0 to 1, x t dot phi naught of t dt. And our phi naught of x is s squared, so our phi naught of t will be t squared. That's what you can see here. We are integrating with respect to t, so x becomes a constant. We can bring it out. Then, during this Definite integral, computing it is going to give us 1 over 4. We multiply 2 by x, and that gives us 1 over 4x. So we do our second iteration to get our phi 2 of x. So that one will be given by integral from 0 to 1 xt dot 1 over 4t dt because this 1 over 4 t stands for phi 1 of t so since we are integrating with respect to t that means we can bring our 1 over 4 x out and when we integrate um, we do this integration here we are going to get 1 over 3 when you multiply it here, we are going to get 1 over 12x. Then, finding phi 3 of x will give us this. You should know this here stands for phi 2 of t. So we, we can bring 1 over 12x out since a constant. When we integrate, <coughs> this we get 1 over 3. Multiplying 3 gives us 1 over 36 times all times x, right? <coughs> so putting that into the assumed series solution is going to give us this. Alright, so know that the assumed series solution is given by this. But we now know what this is, this is, this is, and what this is also. So and that gives us this. But know that from the question, our investigative parameter lambda is negative 1. So making that substitution is going to give us y of x will be equal to, that means wherever we have an odd power of lambda, it will be negative there. And wherever we have an even power of lambda, it will be positive. So you are going to have an alternating series. So that will give us y of x will be equal to s squared minus 1 over 4x plus 1 over 4x minus 1 over 37x. And we can, since we have x to be a common factor, we can bring that one out and we have something like this. Okay? So when we have this, can you see that 
1 over 4 minus 1 over 12, 1 over 37 is a geometric progression. And that means we can find for the common ratio. And we also have a first term. So the first term is 1 over 4. And the common ratio is this over this or this over this, which will give us negative 1 over 3. So what we do is that we find the sum to infinity of this geometric sequence. And that will be the first term over 1 minus r. The first term is 1 over 4. Then 1 minus, this is the common ratio. So computing this gives us 3 over 16. So that means we can represent the whole of this by 3 over 16. So that will give us y of x will be equal to x squared minus 3 over 16x. And this happens to be the solution to our integral equation that we had. Okay. So this is how we solve the Fred Holmes integral equation by using the method of approximation and using a free term. Okay. So I'm waiting can render a final year student of mathematics KNST. It has been a pleasure coming here with yet another lesson in our study of integral equation. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content. So in our next video, that's lesson 9, we will do the same thing, that's method of statistical approximation, but in this case, we'll be using the kernel and not the free term. So thank you very much and see you in the next video.